All right. If I were to ask you who is the largest cybersecurity vendor by revenue today, you would likely tell me that it is Palo Alto Networks, Cisco, Fortinet, or maybe CrowdStrike. No. Believe it or not, Microsoft is the new 400-pound gorilla in the cybersecurity space today. Microsoft generated about $15 billion in revenue last year, which is about a 50% increase from a year ago. So with that growth trajectory and no slowdown in cyber incidents, as we know, Microsoft should be on pace to generate over $20 billion in security revenues in 2022. To put this into perspective, it is about four times the size of Palo Alto Networks by revenue today. While Microsoft may not maintain a 50% year-over-year growth rate, the company is poised to double down and expand through acquisitions. Gartner predicts that by 2025, more than 95% of new digital workloads will be deployed on cloud-native platforms. As more workloads shift to the cloud, the security expertise and capabilities have become supercritical. Google just bought Mandiant for $5 billion, and Microsoft bowed out of the deal, and now we know why. Microsoft launched its own new managed service dubbed Microsoft Security Expert to help companies with cybersecurity challenges. The three public cloud providers, Microsoft, Amazon, and Google, have all made acquisitions in the past year in the cybersecurity space. Microsoft acquired CloudNox and Risk IQ. AWS has acquired Wicker, a company that offers an encrypted messaging platform. So in this video, I want to talk about Microsoft cybersecurity product and services portfolio and how they compare with AWS and Google Cloud. Let's talk. Hi, my name is Afak. I hope you're doing well. As per Cybercrime magazine, cybercrime will cost the world $10 trillion annually by 2025. Microsoft offers security products for enterprises, SMBs, and personal users. Microsoft Enterprise Security or Business Solutions include identity threat protection, cloud security, compliance, and risk management. Identity products include the well-known Azure Active Directory, CloudNox Permissions Management, and Verifiable Credentials. Gartner lists Microsoft as a leader in access management magic quadrant. The Azure AD provides single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, conditional access, and a single identity control plane that provides unified identity management for better visibility and control. Azure Active Directory comes in four editions, free Office 365 apps, premium P2, and premium P1. You can access the free edition if you are on Azure um, or Office 365 customer. Likewise, if you're an enterprise mobility and security customer, access to premium editions is also included. The premium editions are suitable for hybrid environments and they cost around six to nine dollars per user per month. Microsoft acquired CloudNox last year. CloudNox is a CM, a cloud infrastructure entitlement management solution it provides comprehensive visibility and control over permissions for any identity and resource across multiple cloud providers such as Azure, AWS, and GCP. Then you have AD Verifiable Credentials, which is a federated identity service beyond your AD trust boundary. The solution uses decentralized PKI and relies on many partners such as Clear or uh, IDEMIA. Behind the scenes though, the verifiable credential solution uses a decentralized ledger systems like Bitcoin for decentralized identifier implementation. Microsoft offers cloud native SIM and XDR solutions known as Sentinel. It is like the Google Chronicle service. SIM stands for security information and event management. The way it works is that it uses logs and event data from apps, devices and networks to provide threat protection and compliance. Microsoft competes with other popular SIM vendors such as Splunk, Datadog, and Logarithm. Microsoft also offers 365 
Defender XTR for endpoint protection. Still, since it is an XTR, it takes a wider view to go beyond endpoints by taking actions across a broader stack by acting on things like identities, apps, email, data, and cloud apps. XTR and SIM are two different things though. XTR is not a substitute for SIM. SIM has use cases outside of threat detection, such as log management. To add to the confusion, Microsoft has another variant of Defender product for cloud, which is essentially a combo of CSPM and CWPP for multi-cloud deployments. I know this is turning into uh, an alphabet soup, so bear with me here. CSPM is cloud security posture management, whereas CWPP stands for cloud workload protection. The two solutions are complementary since CSPM aims to provide compliance and protection against misconfiguration, mismanagement, and mistakes. In contrast, CWPP solution is typically agent-based and provides a workload-centric solution for like bare metals, VMs, serverless environments, and containers. So CSPM relies on cloud APIs to its job, on the other hand, whereas CWP relies on tying itself deep into the OS, the operating system. I'm sorry, but you must know one other term, and that's CNAP, or Cloud Native Application Protection Platform. It is simply a combo of CM, CSPM, and CWP. Microsoft also offers a CASB solution with a product known as the Defender for Cloud or SaaS apps. With Cloud Apps Defender, Microsoft competes with Netscope and Zscaler. Microsoft also offers GitHub Advanced Security for enterprises using GitHub, which is essentially a shift left security service for securing the CI CD pipeline, the DevOps CI CD pipeline for DevSecOps. What's more, Microsoft also acquired a company in 2019 named Blue Talon and repurposed that into a Purview product lineup. So Microsoft Purview helps with information protection, things like data lifecycle management and data loss prevention or DLP. The Purview lineup also includes protection against insider risk management and communication compliance. Communication compliance is an interesting solution that detects a company's code of conduct violation. Microsoft $15 billion security portfolio consists of identity and access management, threat protection and cloud security information, uh, cloud security and information protection and governance and risk management. There are tons of products, some organically grown like Active Directory and most others came through acquisitions such as Defender, from Giant Software and CM from CloudNox and Purview from Blue Talon. All right, the challenge for cybersecurity professionals is that security models and controls are inconsistent across cloud providers, much like the networking. They are also often poorly documented as well. So these nuances run deep into the infrastructure and management consoles and are not something you can pick up in a few weeks or even few months after taking some supposed training. It usually takes a considerable amount of hands-on experience to understand the deep ends of a cloud provider. So let me give you a 10,000 feet overview of where each cloud provider is today. AWS is the oldest cloud provider, which has its pros and cons. So for pros, AWS is the dominant player. So there is a lot of knowledge and tooling available for it. For the most part, AWS has much better defaults than say Azure. AWS also provides service isolation out of the box. For example, accounts are isolated from each other. You can tie all your company's accounts together in an org if you want it, uh, and at the same time limit centralized access AWS has done an excellent job at implementing security groups and granular IAM. Some of the notable security AWS features are Amazon Guard Duty, Amazon Inspector, AWS CloudTrail, AWS Shield, and Amazon Macy. Now every upside has a downside or a dark side as we would have said in cybersecurity jargon. The isolation gets in the way of scaling enterprise management. 
even within an account collecting event data using a security event hub was limited per region. For example, you need to manage all the alerts from your accounts in the US West region, then set it up all again in Virginia, which is part of the US East region to handle accounts that use those regions. Thankfully, AWS removed that limitation and added support for cross-region aggregation about six months ago. Managing IAM at a scale can get difficult when you throw in the advanced features like permission boundaries and credentials. Now, despite those limitations, AWS is still the best place to start as far as robust security is concerned. Google Cloud Platform or GCP is improving rapidly. For example, Google recently acquired Mandian to provide threat intelligence services. For security, I would put GCP somewhere between AWS, which is the gold standard, and the Azure. It has more granular IAM and defaults to secure configurations, but lacks feature richness compared to AWS. The Cloud Security Command Center is like their version of AWS Security Hub. Google also has many more open source integrations like allowing Foresty to manage security configurations. Without a doubt, GCP offers best-in-class container management and AI and ML services. It is still hard to find talent though with deep GCP security experience and the same goes for tooling as well. Nonetheless, the enterprises have plenty of interest in trying out GCP today. Microsoft Azure, perhaps like Microsoft Legacy, suffers from a lack of consistency and poor documentation. Many Azure services default to a less secure configuration. For example, if you create a new virtual network and a new VM, all ports and protocols, they're all open. Unlike GCP and AWS, which start with uh, a default deny. Azure Active Directory is the single source of truth for authorization and permission management as we talked about earlier. Unlike AWS, Azure allows it to be managed from a single directory. Azure also offers cross-region activity logs across both the console and the APIs out of the box. Azure Security Center also covers the entire tenant, but at the same time offers subscription level access so different teams like production versus engineering can manage their own alerts. To make things more difficult than they need to be, Azure offers two types of security groups, one for networks and one for apps, uh, and they're managed differently. You can get most done in PowerShell, but API and SDK supports are still pretty spotty. It is possible to achieve the same level of security with Azure as with AWS and GCP, but you will need to configure and test your configuration to ensure that they are actually like that. Now, if Microsoft security revenues are on fire, it is hard to imagine that not to be the case with AWS and GCP. If I were to guess native cloud security solutions provided by Microsoft, Amazon and Google are already generating multiples of tens of billions of dollars, which means hyperscalers will continue to plow billions of dollars in organic growth, like feature development from within and M&A since cybercrime is only to rise over time. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you back here next Friday. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.